Wednesday Wanderers, it's Ranger Aaron, and we're going to be talking today about an exoskeleton. So that's a really big word, and let's start with that skeleton part, because you've probably heard of your skeleton, which is the bones that are inside of your body. So your bones are there to keep you upright and allow you to move around and do all sorts of things so you aren't just a big puddle on the ground like a slug. But some animals don't have the type of skeleton that we do. Instead, they have what's called an exoskeleton, and that means that instead of having bones on the insides of their bodies, they have kind of a hard outer shell covering all of their body. So some animals that are gonna have exoskeletons are gonna be your crayfish, millipedes, all of our spiders, all of our insects, even the soft ones like caterpillars are gonna have a soft exoskeleton. And all of your roly polies are gonna have that exoskeleton. So you can think about them, they all have that sort of hard outer coating all over their body. And again, sometimes it's that softer outer coating all over their body. And that's kind of what gives them the ability to move around. It helps them from drying out. So if they didn't have that shell all over their body, they would be always drying out in the sun. So it helps them to keep all of their water inside of their body. And then it also just keeps them from being that big puddle like that slug. So some of our animals that we can think of do have shells on their bodies, but they don't have exoskeletons because exoskeletons are made of a very special stuff called chitin. And so some animals have an outer shell that is not made of that stuff. So we can think of turtles and snails and mussels and clams, and they all have shells on their bodies, but they are not exoskeletons. So that exoskeleton is a really neat adaptation that can kind of help out a lot of animals by acting like a suit of armor. So you can think, I like to think about both our roly-poly, so when that roly-poly gets really scared, it's gonna curl up in a ball, and it's gonna have all those hard plates of that exoskeleton surrounding its body to keep it safe. So it acts like a suit of armor. Or if you think about like that crayfish, I think about our crayfish kind of like a tank. It's walking around underneath the water, and it's got that full body exoskeleton, and then it's got these huge pincers too that are hard as well, so they can use their exoskeletons as tools for grabbing some prey out there. But the problem with an exoskeleton is that when you need to grow, you've got this hard outer shell on you and you can't grow. So in order for these animals that have exoskeletons, so in order for them to grow, they have to get rid of the old exoskeleton. So they're gonna go through a process that we call molting. They're gonna get rid of their whole outer body and they're gonna be really vulnerable. So another animal, because they don't really, they have kind of a soft body when they emerge from that old molt, they have this soft body, they can be eaten really easily because they don't have their full suit of armor and they can't really move around as well either. But they're gonna, every time they need to grow, and they might grow many times in their life, and they'll have to go through this process of shedding their whole exoskeleton coming out of that exoskeleton and then they have to grow a new one. I've got some examples of some animals, some insects that have exoskeletons. So this is a dragonfly and you can see on the legs they've got joints where they need to move. So this has a very rigid exoskeleton. The entire tail is these overlapping plates so that they have a long, flexible tail. I've got some more insects over here. Every one of their legs has joints. This one right over here. This is our wheel bug. I've got a wasp. Again, that flexible abdomen. Those joints on the legs. A cicada, a horsefly. And then when you're out hiking, you might also notice some stuff that are not actually the insect, but are their shed exoskeletons. So this is a dragonfly molt. So again, remember, in order for them to grow, they've got to shed the old exoskeleton in order for them to get bigger. Every summer you're going to see a lot of these. These are cicada shells. So they come up out of the ground, they're going to latch onto something, and then they're going to make a hole in the back of their exoskeleton, and then they're going to emerge as that soft cicada, and then they're going to grow that new exoskeleton as that adult cicada, but you'll find lots of these 
old shed exoskeletons. We call them molts. When you go out on your hike looking for these animals that have exoskeletons, you're going to be on the lookout for any type of insect. And it could be the adult. Maybe you're going to see some butterflies that are going to be fluttering around. They have exoskeletons and moths and bees. They all have exoskeletons. Maybe it's going to be that caterpillar form or that uh, sort of soft bodied form that they have. And you're going to notice that they're going to move a little bit differently, but it's still an exoskeleton. You're also going to be on the lookout for things like roly polies and millipedes and all spiders have exoskeletons. So you don't have to look too far because these creatures are all around us. If you choose to go down to the water, crayfish are a great example of an animal that has an exoskeleton. And then there's also gonna be a lot of insects in the water too that are gonna have exoskeletons. When you find your animal that has an exoskeleton, you're gonna look at the way that they move. Where do they move? Do they have joints on their legs? Do they have overlapping plates? Are they soft bodied or are they hard? Notice whether this crayfish is crawling or swimming, it still has to move only where it has joints because it's covered all over in that very hard exoskeleton. For your craft, we're gonna get into the mind of an animal that has an exoskeleton by making an exoskeleton for ourselves. So you're gonna go ahead and dig through your recycling, grab some nice strong cardboard, you're gonna need some tape, and you're gonna need some scissors. And I won't really tell you how you're gonna go about doing this because everybody's gonna be a little bit different, and it's gonna depend on what types of materials you can get and the shapes that you start out with. ahead and I made a crayfish claw. So once you get your exoskeleton, you can see how it feels to move in an exoskeleton. How do you think this helps your organism? How do you think this hurts your animal? And what do you think would be better? Do you think it's better to have soft human skin with our hard bones or do you think it's better to have a hard exoskeleton? Thanks for joining me. As always, if you've got any comments, if you found something cool on your hike that you want to show me and you've got questions about it, you can always send them to me and I would love to hear from you and I will see you all next time.